Welcome to the show. Today's guest is Nandita Das, Bollywood actor, director and a social activist. She's joining me to talk about the need for inclusiveness in our attitudes in India, as well as her work that supports the cause. Nandita, great to have you on the show. Thank you. Um, according to you, what does inclusivity mean to a country like India? To the world, I would say. You know, I mean, I think inclusivity is extremely important if you want a humane compassionate world, you want a humane, compassionate society. And I think all of us aspire to that, where there'll be more peace, there'll be more respect for each other, you know, there'll be more affection. It's almost utopian, idealistic, we think. Mm -hmm. But I think idealism is extremely important because if you don't have an ideal goal, where do you move towards? That's true. And today in the world everywhere, you see, and definitely in India, that there is a lot of divisive elements, there are a lot of divisive politics. Um, there is a lot of us and them and you know this is normal and this is not this is mainstream you know that's outside it so I think there are tons of marginalized communities and the actual mainstream is becoming narrower and narrower in fact probably that is the minority everybody seems to be out of it so if we really want a society a country which is you know is, is, is just more peaceful more compassionate more humane then we have to have a more inclusive society it's not even a choice. I think that's just the way it ought to be. In your work, the, whether it's some of the roles that you've played or the socially focused films that you've made um, or sort of the voice that you've lent to some of the some campaigns, for example, Dark is Beautiful, there, is, there are aspects of inclusivity and it's very pro-unity uh, in a way, in a larger sense. Sure. Um, so whether it's your work or, or the work of some of the other people that you've met and you've come yeah. across, what stands out to you as, as great examples of inclusivity, do you think? And, and why? Well, a lot, lot of the work has been, I mean, for instance, the campaign that you mentioned, Dark is Beautiful, you know, I mean, uh, when this organization called Women of Worth contacted me and hmm. li like I support many campaigns, I kind of gave a code, gave a photograph and I thought, okay, for whatever it's worth, you know, let me support it. And before I knew, it was kind of wildfire because it had touched a very raw nerve. Yeah. This campaign should have probably happened 10 years ago. I mean, Black is Beautiful that happened in the US, yeah. you know, decades ago, uh, has come to this country rather late. Considering in our country, there's such an obsession with, with fairness, fair. you know, yeah. I mean, the, I think all of us have been subjected to it right from our yes. childhood. And I feel fortunate that my parents didn't put that complex in because sometimes if your immediate family sort of, you know, keeps telling you that you're just not good enough because you're dark, I'm sure it can have a very deep impact to your self-esteem and which is what I've seen in many young girls. So, in fact, this is one issue that by default came into my life. And uh, when you're saying dark is beautiful, you're again not trying to create a parallel definition of beauty. I mean, if, if I had done the campaign, I'd probably just call it just, you know, be yourself or mm. you know, natural is beautiful or whatever. You know? Yeah, but I think so, it's important to say dark is beautiful exactly, given, given, given the obsession with fair. Exactly. So it's yeah. more a reaction thing to say that because fairness has been almost equated with, with beauty. beauty. And yes. those are the images you see all around, yeah. whether it's on hoardings, newspapers, magazines, films, television. So what it does is in a country which is 90% dark, it's telling you that the 10% is actually the mainstream. You yeah. know, that's that's what you ought to be like. And if you're not, then you're not going to be successful and that's in your a work, huge, with absolutely, your love, yeah. with your marriage, with your parents. You are just not good yeah. enough. Well, even in you associated know? industries, I mean, for example, if you take the airlines industry, you don't absolutely. see enough air hostesses you don't, who represent yeah. the majority skin tone out there. You don't. You know, most of them are a preference. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's been clearly, I've spoken to some of the air hostesses. In fact, you know, sort of one sort of black sheep, as they say, no pun intended, but you know, and you asked them and they said, yeah, it was really tough and this airline didn't want me to, this one was, and there's a lot of politics behind it and a lot of headhunters tell you that there is a preference. I contacted a maid agency for a maid at one point and they said, oh, she's really good, but let me warn you, she's quite dark. And you know, um, a, maid a household, household help, household <laughs> help agency, you know. So it's percolated in every class. I mean, you have all kinds of products we know that the products have increased so much yeah so i think everywhere you know there is this division there is this thing that they are lesser they are not good enough they are not like us mm. you know we are the best mm. and if you want to be part of this world then you ought to be like us so yeah. that us is actually such a narrow sliver of people and and that is true of whether 
you know whatever the issue may be whatever the other may be you know it's mm. whether it's like i said when i did fire uh, the reason that film you know has impacted me also because i realized there's such a notion of the other yeah. you know homosexuality is something that at least 15 years ago when i did it it was such a hush hush no, thing no, you topic. just yeah, yeah. you just don't talk about yeah. it it exists you're just supposed to pretend and you know a lot of people would say oh but this is not normal and you know you're spreading lesbianism by showing this film so with you know with a lot yeah. of my work even the film i directed firak yeah. which is about again you know it was after gujarat riots the, the everything that lingers on after the obvious violence it was about that and again it's about and how fantastic religion fantastic thing can, by the way a fantastic thing yeah and how religion can divide people and it is dividing people mm. you know so it's it's really i think inclusivity is in fact that one thing that we all need to focus much more because by just i think focusing on that in a way we are embracing everything else lot of the work that inspires me and there are some amazing people away from the media light silently you know day after day working towards that inclusivity because when they work with a marginalized community the idea is not just to keep them in that cocoon the idea is to bring them and make them as much a part of an active society as you know as it needs to be so a mm. uh, lot of that work is is in fact what truly inspires me i also try to do that whether it's through my acting work whether like yeah. you said through the campaigns through my human rights work the film i direct is the idea is of bridging that gap because there is a widened sort mm. of a huge gap that exists we can't deny it we can't wish it away so the idea is just just to keep trying to bridge it and uh, for instance the india inclusion summit that is happening end of november in bangalore i definitely support it i mean the name itself i think mm. is something that uh, is is a need of the hour um, but there i think they are focusing primarily on the inclusivity that is required for the differently able uh, people whether it's you know mentally challenged people or yeah. and the reason this word has now come up is differently able because somewhere they're understanding that all of us are disabled in some way or the other you know some some are more visible some aren't yes i don't think any of us can claim to be able in everything we are not you know we are not gods if at all gods exist but we definitely aren't that yeah. so the fact that different people are able in different ways and let's be compassionate to that let's not define what is normal you know let's not use words like that because mm. what may be normal for me may not be normal for you and and that's true in so many different ways so true. i think of course right. this summit is interesting because a lot of people are going to share their stories share their experiences talk about what inclusivity means for them and uh, and a lot of people are coming from their personal stories and those stories i think are the most powerful ones because they actually live with it day in and day out so mm -hmm. is there any project that you're working on or you that, that you're hoping to work on in the future um that you can share about that's, that's sort of along the same uh focus well in recent times if you ask me what i've been doing it is really the play that has engaged me a lot it's a play that i wrote uh, directed acted in uh, my husband's also acting in it it's oh, a couple okay. story uh -huh. and it's about the subtle inequalities that exist in the gender relationship of the educated and affluent class because otherwise we always talk about inequality among the poor among the uneducated we don't really talk about the inequalities that exist in our class of people so again the idea is to somewhere bridge that gap to try and say that you know we are all conditioned and it's time that we look into that and not just the men are conditioned the women are conditioned that too that is true you know we are ridden with guilt constantly and trying to see how um you how can look can after people you can please children. people yes it's a uh, yeah also um especially for the working woman it's a double whammy because you are expected to do everything that traditionally your roles were and at the same time you have aspirations and desires and why not and you want to keep up with your work. colleagues at work Absolutely. the male counterparts in particular <laughs> yes and it's already a struggle there yeah. so you know it is it is a bit of a thing so i think yeah i think inclusion is such a broad kind of a word that truly encompasses almost every work that you can do with a marginalized community but the sad mm. thing is that in a in a society where some of us are more privileged let's say we are not really i mean you are always part of some marginalized community like you and i may be considered to be darker than many others and Absolutely, you know so we are part yeah. of so we all are at some level mm. you know so you you're too tall i'm too short somebody's too this you know so we are all part, but the sad thing is that often that community has to fight their battle it's like if you have if you have hiv aids then it, on 1st december 
on the AIDS day, it's your job to raise voice. You know, if it's a, if you're a woman and if you're concerned about women's issues and you want to make it sort of, you want to bring it into the mainstream society and talk about these issues, then on 8th March, on Women's Day, women are expected to hmm. talk about it. So it always the pressure or, you know, on disability day, it's the disabled or their families that have to raise the voice. Yeah. But it's sad. I mean, you know, everything should be your and my problem as much as it's, you know, the people who are actually affected by it only. I mean, if we are living in this world, if I am a mother of a three-year-old child and I want him to be happy and grow up, I want him to grow up in a compassionate society. I want him to care about everything. So why should those who are affected directly only be the spokespersons for it? Why can't all of us think that everything is as much my problem as it's theirs? So I think that little shift, if we can all have in our minds, would sure. also help in just making things more inclusive. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Nanita, what I see around me is that we all try to connect um, to the commonalities that people that we share with other people, right? And that's sure. that's human tendency. Yes. That we look for, you know, we try to connect like with like. But I well, that ought to be. I'm not so sure if it's human tendency alone in the sense we also keep trying to find differences and that's why divisive politics works because yeah. you know we are also told that oh you know regional say for instance mm. when we go out of, outside India we are like Indians or we are South Asians but the minute we are back in India like so and so is a you know Marathi and so and so is a Gujarati and so and so is a whether it's religion whether it's region whether yeah. it's language whether it's caste whether it's whatever we are also trying to find those separations which is I think a wasteful exercise it is so what, <laughs> what I'm trying to get is I think once so th there's two extremes to it. One is you 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 connect like with like, and sure. you sort of maybe uh, like-minded people. You apply a very clanny mentality, maybe or yes. at one extreme. On the other hand, you said, oh, that's you know, we're from different states or different religions, sure. and we're different. But I think there's a middle ground where you connect like with like, and maybe there you start connecting uh, character and personality features and, and belief systems, not necessarily mm. religion at a larger scale or skin right. color and not, not the way you dress. Not the narrow definitions yes. of what the us ought to be yeah. or what my community ought to be. And on, on one side of the coin should be that. Mm. On the other side of the coin should be a consciousness of subtle differences, uh, whether it's approach to, to certain things, life choices, yeah. um, career choices. The openness you know, to Yeah, it. sexual choices. So it's almost like that there are two sides of the coin that have to sit comfortably together for and that is something maybe what what every one of us needs to practice to become more inclusive absolutely yeah. no you, you're right i mean it's it's a very thin balance it's that comfort in being who you are feeling a sense of rootedness where you are and at the same time not judging the other so if today i'm patriotic let's say if i say that oh i'm really happy to be an indian then this is not against any other country. I'm not happy to be an Indian because the Pakistani, I have to be against Pakistan to be an Indian. Because patriotism is a feeling that every person in every country can have. So I'm happy with my patriotism. If you are just as patriotic about your country or you are about yours, that's good too. So it's that thin balance of, you know, having that sense of rootedness, yet being open to saying that, yeah, there are different people, they have different ways of looking at things and I think that's what in some sense travel does when you travel. Yeah, when you travel your yeah, eyes Yeah, you open really your mind because you yeah. say, okay, this is open not up. the only right way. There is no right way. There are multiple right ways if at yes. all there is a right way. And you, all you want to do is just be happy. Exactly. That's the bottom and that's line. why today when you travel, you connect with, uh, you know, a person from Spain or Bangladesh or, you know, Latin America or wherever, probably more than, let's say, a fellow Indian. Just, I mean, somebody doesn't become your close friend because that person is just, you know, Indian. So similarly, or if of your religion or of your caste, of your creed or whatever, of your city. So I think that in some sense, cinema also does that because cinema also is a window into other cultures, other ways of thinking, other ways of feeling. And when you watch films that are not part of your way of thinking or your culture and you say, okay, you know, that, that that's another way. And is there something that I could learn from that? And, yeah. and I think that openness and that rootedness, if one can find that right balance, I think you're more at peace with yourself and you're not antagonistic about other things as well. I mean, Gandhiji said, Vasudheva Kutumbakam, which yes. means the whole world is, is my, my family. family. You know, I mean, all of us are not so evolved, but um, it's good to have that idealism and to True. slowly expand and, you know, become citizens of the world where everybody can be and has the right to be part of it. 
and it's fantastic to see people like you in in the film industry and in the <coughs> mainstream media taking up this cause but i'm not and really in, in the industry ways. i'm on, very much on the fringes of it and in fact that allows me to do other things and exposes me to other realities i think if i was just in that you know you also tend to be in a bit of a glass house and then you know you don't know the other reality so well so I'm, i feel very fortunate that my work has exposed me to so many different realities <laughs> fantastic thank you for being on the show thank you lakshmi join our mailing list at chaiwithlakshmi.in forward slash subscribe and keep in touch with us on facebook twitter google plus and pinterest <laughs>